Trail running is like jazz music and fixed time races are classical music. You can be a fan of both. Generally people like one or the other and definitely that comes out whenever you look at uh, videos on YouTube or podcasts. Trail runners, especially trail ultra runners versus fixed time ultra runners. Two different sports almost and they both have their fans. So yesterday, you know, before this all happened, I was talking about the 24-hour attempt of Killian, and I was like, you know, he's a great trail runner. I don't disagree with that at all. But to just say, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and break a record that's been around for 23-plus years, you know, one of the biggest records out there, Kuros is 303 kilometers, and he's just going to show up and do it and break the record. It's kind of like, okay, I don't think so. You know, they're totally two different things. You know, Killian has won these races, but he's never, you know, he's he's a great trail runner. But, you know, to come out and just say, oh, I'm going to get on a track and I'm going to do this event. And that's why I say trail racing is like jazz and fixed time events are like classical music. In trail racing, it happens on one day on a course, just like jazz in a club. You know, you put down a performance. It's unique. It's interesting. It's inspiring. It can be all those things but it can't be replicated. You know, there are no, you know, you, you like John Coltrane or Miles Davis. He does it and then it's gone. It doesn't really get replicated. I'm sure there's somebody that's like, I'm sure there are jazz cover bands, but they can't do it the way Bird did it or these guys did it. And the same thing with Killian. You can't replicate what Killian's done at Western States or UTMB or any of these places. I mean, heck, here in California with COVID and the fires and... Uh, all this stuff going on and growth who knows if we'll even have western states in the future it may be all condos up there uh the trees may all die you know who knows what's going to go on and so you know i often see people like on oh walmsley just broke the course record of western states they're like yeah but the old record was by timothy olsen on a nice cold day on like the snow course so how do you compare it's comparing apples and oranges it's basically comparing jazz performances you know it's just not the way you know classical music you know, there's a Beethoven piece been playing it for hundreds of years, and in hundreds of years from now, you can play the Beethoven piece. You're not necessarily going to be able to play, you know, the Miles Davis piece, and that's the same thing. Like, you know, Kuros's record, 200 years from now, someone, you know, if it gets broken, but you know, you can go out, find a track, get a timing system, and go and try it. And I got to give props, Killian and his group did go find a track, and. Um, go after the record it was just all the hype and all the passion and love and i get it i love the passion uh it's kind of funny that uh trail people just get all up in the air about their guys you know walmsley killian jordan and you know it's like hey that's fine but it's like you know jazz aficionados that are the same way and defend their people and their art form and you know it's cool but it's just here today gone tomorrow um you know people are talking about Giannis Kuros for years and years and I guarantee you they will for years and years to come because what he did can be replicated you can go out and do it just like classical music you've got the sheet music you get a great orchestra get a great acoustics and you can go out and try and redo that performance but like with jazz you really can't recreate that performance you know the atmosphere the night just the mood uh, jazz I don't know a lot about it but you know just a spur of the moment kind of thing and that's the same thing with like trail running you know and uh, you know Killian was out there having a great time at Hard Rock and stopped and hung out with people and did all these kind of things and it was just an an interesting experience and I get that so basically um, you know um, thank you for watching the last video and you know it's just my opinion it's kind of funny that in today's world you still get the whole fat shaming kind of thing going on I had one guy saying I had 40 kilograms of fat around my waist well yeah, maybe, but you know, who cares? It's like, so what? You know, I started running in 1979. You know, I used to be a sub three hour marathoner. I'm not anymore. You know, and I'm a barely kidding break six hours, but I can have an opinion. There's plenty of journalists who talk about sports that they never played basketball, football, soccer, you name it. And so that's my observations. And I think my observations are valid. Um, Killian you know didn't have a shot at breaking this record i thought maybe he'd do a fast hundred and he didn't even get to there but then when i saw the conditions there were nuts i can't believe solomon and uh, you know everybody around him said hey let's go for a 24-hour record in norway in november freezing cold uh, the conditions everything about the event were kind of hanky and weird um, wasn't thought out properly like i said with the restroom situation with the turnaround situation 
Um, I saw some stuff going on that may be construed as pacing and stuff. I've been at 24 hour races. I've crewed at Desert Solstice a number of times. And so I know the rules and I've done over a, uh, 19 races of 100 miles or longer on many of them on loop courses so I know how things work on them and you know there were some times where um, you know there were people walking or running along with running along with Killian that you know can be construed as pacing um, I one time just had a brain fart in the middle of the night and walked along with my athlete on a back stretch when she was really cold and tired for like 100 yards and got in trouble and could have almost got her disqualified so um, it would have been interesting if they would have, you know, I mean, granted, they had the video and everything out there. So it's kind of one of those things, um, you know, it's trail running. Yeah. Knock yourself out. I know your guys are fans. It's amazing how supportive of this things are. But, hey, this fixed time racing is different. And I just think that sometimes people just see the numbers and go, oh, that looks doable. I'm going to go out and do it. And the thing is, you know. 24 hour races and longer they're a long time and they're really difficult to be going out there and doing Muhammad Ali kind of you know um, saying I'm gonna win you know I'm gonna do this you know I mean uh, Joshua Chip guy said he was gonna go out and get the 5k record and he went out and did it but you know bottom line that was only gonna be you know less than 13 minutes out there you know so if he had an off day it's not too bad uh, same thing with the 10K world record. You know, if things don't go right, it's okay. But a 24-hour race, it's a long time to be out there, and it's a long time to suffer and just in your head and in that zone. And, uh, you know, like I said, I hear, you know, he had some dizziness and stuff, and I'm like, I'm sure he did. You're going around that track at seven-minute miles, you do get dizzy. It's tough. I've been there and done it myself at a lot slower pace, and I've seen some of the best athletes in the world. I was at the race when Camille Heron broke the world record, you know, and she had her moments where she went down and didn't think she was going to get back up, and then she got back up. You know, she had tacos and a beer and kept going. You know, those are things you've got to learn and do, you know, whereas like in a trail race, you know, especially Killian and his trail races, you know, you're not doing this steady, repetitive thing over and over and over in the same environment, and they made it difficult, you know, six, seven hours of daylight, freezing ass cold. You know, he went as far as he could. I congratulate the athletes who stayed out there the entire time and kept going. Um, you know, it's always difficult to, you know, keep going in these races, but that's kind of the whole thing. And it's all kind of funny, like officially dropped out. It's like, you know, you don't drop out. You sign up for a 24-hour race. You stop at 10 hours. That's your 24-hour PB. You know, it's 83 miles. It is what it is. So, as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.